Howdy, AP Breakout. It's Miss Kosh. Today we're looking at um, 314 um, from the pre -cal curriculum, and we're going to graph polar curves. So the way that I have this set up is I like to go from a rectangular curve over here to the polar curve over here so that I can find my values from the graph and not just plug in numbers on a chart, if that makes sense. Um, so we're going to work through a handful of them. And it seems like a lot of problems. And then I created something on Desmos um, that's going to help us kind of summarize things, the different kinds of, of graphs. I don't think there's any way I can do all of this in one video. Um, but we're going to see how far we get. And, um, and, and the reason that I am going to graph six of these things by hand is because what I think AP is taking... Um, they do a lot of what I think they're taking seriously or what I think they're going to do frequently is have you graph from a certain angle to another certain angle. So they're going to say, okay, here's the graph of this equation. Like, okay, if you look down on the graph that I already drew, let's say we're looking at this graph. They may say, tell me where it goes from theta equals um, zero to theta equals pi over two. And so here's this whole graph and you have to determine, is it this part? Is it that part? Is it that part? That's a mess, but um, we're not ready for that yet. But that's why I'm gonna graph as many as I am by hand, okay? So let's jump in and get started. Um, except I wanna use blue, I like blue. So then we're just graphing y equals four cosine x. Hopefully this is very easy for you. And we, we know that we start here, we go to the midline here, we're there at negative four, we're back here, and we're back here. And it kind of does this nice little curve, the concavity changes here. Um, is this perfect? No, but you know, basic idea. Okay, so now when I extend this out, or maybe I should be a little more precise at the, um, the pi over six family, no, the pi over three family. Yes, pi over three family. This one is there at two, and this one's here at negative two. And okay, so I'm a little off here and pretty close. You know, I, I've done worse. Um, okay, so what we need to do is now we're graphing, um, and I've seen AP Precal write it like this. They'll say R, um, how do they do it? They say R equals F of theta, which equals four cosine theta. Or they may say the other way around, where they may say f of theta equals r, which equals whatever. Okay, basically what's happening here is the radius is equal to this function in terms of theta. Okay, so we're going to graph, instead of graphing um, an x and a y coordinate, we're going to plug in angle measures theta and figure out r, the radius values. So if I look over here at my first graph, I have an angle of zero and a, and a radius of four. So I'm gonna come over here, an angle of zero and a radius of one, two, three, four. Here is my first point, okay? Then let's let's go ahead and we'll use this. So then at, what, what was this one? This is, I think this is by pi over six. So one pi over six, two pi over six is pi, this is pi over three. So at pi over three, I need, I need a radius of two. So coming over here, pi over three, a radius of one, two, is this in the right spot? I think so, okay. And then what happens when I get to pi, two pi, I'm at zero. So two pi, when I'm at zero, that's just the pole, okay. And then we get to, we get to negative two at, where is this one right here? This is two pi over three. So at two pi over three, we have a radius of negative two. So come back to our graph. 2 pi over 3, you'll notice, is do 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 Pretend I can draw a straight line. Did I do the right one? Yes, I did. And since, well, 2 pi over 3 was going this way. My apologies. Um, but now I need to turn around and go negative 2. Okay, so I don't know that I want all this clutter on my screen. Um, but I'm going to end up coming on this one right about here. Does that, did I do the right thing? I think so. And then, then I get to, when I get to pi, my r value is negative four. So pi would be coming out in this direction, but I need to turn around and go negative four. Well, you may notice one, two, three, here's negative four. I already have that point, okay? And so what this is gonna do for us is, I didn't graph all the points, and maybe I should have, but this gives us a circle Oh, you know what? I did a totally terrible thing right there. 
Um, let me undo that immediately. Okay, where did we start? Where was our very first point? That was that was embarrassingly terrible. <laughs> anyway, life goes on. Um, but what we ha did here is that we started here at zero, and then we came up and made our circle this way. Okay, and so one of the big things that I've noticed um, in, in pre-cal is well, they want to know where are you. So it might not be a bad idea to say, um, you could write start, or we could say, Maybe we could say, let's do this. Let's say f of 0 equals 4. And so that, that shows us where that point was. And then the arrows can be helpful to tell us that we were going around this way. And actually, we got back to that point by the time we got to pi. But if we keep going and go around another time, then we will do another rotation of that circle. Okay, so that was fun. Let's try the next one. Okay, well, and later we are going to see what happens um, when it's not for cosine x, it's for sine x or something like that, but we're not quite ready for that today or yet. Um, here we go. So this is going to take my sine curve and shift it up one unit. So we're here. Um, we get as high as we're going to go. It's going to be two. We're going to get as low as we go. It's one. You know what? Can I change the scale? I sure can because I can do what I want. Um, I'm gonna, just going to label this so that you can see that this is 1 and this is 2. And so here's negative 1 and uh, negative 2. Okay, so we've shifted up one unit. So we had been at 0. We would have been at 0 and then, you know, do that, do that sort of a curve, but we went up 1. And so then at pi over 2, we're as high as we were going to go. And at pi, we're back to the midline. And at 3 pi over 2, we're as low as we're going to go. And at 2 pi, we get back. Okay, so here is... Whoop, Okay, pretend I can draw a curve. Um, we should have um, sine is going to equal one half um, at the pi over six family, and so these are nice n numbers perhaps to work with. Um, okay, so now what are we graphing? Well, at zero, at zero radians, we are at one radius. So we have the point zero one. Do you know what? Let's make let's change this scale too. Let's say that this is, um, uh, let's call this circle right here, one, and then we'll call this circle two, and we'll call this circle three. Does that make sense? I think it did. Okay. So when we were, where were we? We need the point zero radians. Um, we need a theta of zero and a radius of one, which let me switch colors so you can see it. So that's going to be right here. And then what do we need? Then we need to get, by pi over 2, we're going to be at 2. So at pi over 2, we are at, I think I called this 2. Um, we probably should do something in the middle. Um, where were we? At 1 pi over 6, we were at 1.5. So at pi over 6, we're at 1. So this is 1 half. Uh, that should be here. OK. Um, so this was our starting point here, and we're kind of curving around like this and continuing to curve. Oh, that looks terrible. I don't know if that's any better, but whatever. Okay, and then where do we get back to one and a half? Um, this right here is at five pi over six. So at five pi over six, we're at one and a half also. Five pi over six. Um, one, two, we're here. So we've curved to this. That my curves today don't look good. We'll have to go to Desmos in a minute. Um, and then well, by seven pi over six, I'm at one half. So seven pi over six is here. We're at one half. Okay, I can't see what I'm doing. Seven pi over six is this line, and we are here. And then, did I get to pi? No, I didn't. I forgot. I skipped pi. Oh, terrible. Okay, pi. I'm at two. And then we're at pi over 6. The sum pi over 6 is right there. And then we get at 3 pi over 2, we're at 0. Right? Is that the next thing I care about? Yes. So then we're here. So we're curving something like this. Okay. Then what happens? By 11 pi over 6 right here, we're at 1 half. So here's 11 pi over 6. 1 half is somewhere about... Did I pick the right line? I think I did. And then it kind of comes like this, and then it'll return to 2 pi. This shape, as such as it is, is what we call a cardioid. Okay, it's kind of this heart-shaped thing. This should be a little more smooth out here. Um, but it comes to this point 
right there in the middle. This is a cardioid, and um, we'll talk more about this in a second. But did you see how we kind of worked through it? Um, we should say, where did we start? This right here was our, our start. And so what we had was this was when f of 0 was equal to a positive 1. Um, and then we should draw in our arrows. OK, you can't see what I'm doing. Let's make them green. So our arrows, it was going this way as my theta progressed. OK. I don't know how long this video is. Usually that's how I judge. Well, you know, I'll finish this page. OK, here goes nothing. We ready? Um, so when I graph this, I have an amplitude of 3 but I've been shifted up one, but since it's cosine, we're gonna start at the very top, and our midline here happens up, um, is one unit up, and then we go as low as negative two, and then we're back to here. Okay, um, which one was the pi over three family that gives us one half? Um, so I think we're somewhere here, and then somewhere here, does that make sense? Okay, hang on. Sorry, you guys. Uh, cosine of, yeah, cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. So then that would be 3 halves plus 1. Um, so that would be four, uh, 3 halves. So it's 1 and a half plus 1 is 2 and a half. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so 1, 2 and a half. Okay, so we've got, we've got a nice value that might not be too terrible to graph. Do you know what? I'm sorry. Never mind. Let's just graph this and kind of see what starts to happen. Okay, so we need to begin with the, um, the point zero 0,4. The radius, okay, I said zero 0,4. That's, that's wrong because um, this, is, this is the point um, f of 0 equals 4. This is, but we always write our, um, over here, when we write r comma theta, we would have written it as, Theta is 0, or our value is 4. So it's actually the point four zero, which confuses me every time, and I've been teaching this forever. Okay, well, not forever, but a long time. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's that first point. Okay, and then at pi over 2, we're at 1. Well, we might need something else. We're at 1. And then at... Um, at, we do have a spot where we hit zero. It's just hard to tell where that is. Eh, yuck. Okay, and then at pi, we're at negative two. Pi being at negative two means that now we have to come, instead of going this way for pi, we have to turn around and go the opposite direction, and so we end up here. And so we kind of do something like this, and then we go through that center, and we come up here, um, and then what? We were just at ne at pi negative 2. At 3 pi over 2, we're at positive 1. 3 pi over 2, we're at positive 1 is right here. And so we kind of come around. And then we get all the way back to this value over here. So this is what we call a limacon with an inner loop. And it looks something like that. Um, and come back for my next video whenever I decide to do that because... Um, I, well, I'm going to do these three in another video, practice doing them by hand, and then um, and then I also want to do go to Desmos. So I hope that helps um, get a fuller understanding. All right, good luck. Go practice. Subscribe. Keep watching videos. Let me know how I can help you.